for intrigue. You are now free to ask questions. Remember that we have our Minister of Health as well, and we also have our supporting technical advisors. The floor is open to you. Afternoon. Hi, it's Long Smith, newspaper. Um, just questioning what exactly did the test from the United States Embassy, or their test, what did they reveal in comparison to ours? I would perhaps ask um, the Chief Medical Officer to speak to that. The question, as you're saying, is repeat the question their, again. Their test, because they understand we've been doing testing as well. Um, what was the difference in their testing, whether it be in terms of methodology or what did their test reveal that's different from ours? Sure. Can you take the microphone, please? So, we were not given any specific information about the lab that was used in the testing. We were also not told about the processes that were employed and the methodology of testing. However, the results that were shared with us only a few hours ago did show that the samples taken at four out of five places were negative for three sets of bacteria which are of public health concern. Um, and that is salmonella, E. coli, and coliforms. The test result that was of concern was a total um, bacterial count, something that is very non-specific. And from our perspective, it wasn't a very analytical test because when you get a result like that, there are a lot more tests that have to be done uh, to determine the source and to determine the significance of finding um, uh, bacteria in the water. Uh, Lisa Broom from CDC, and given what they have revealed to us, is there, or have you asked for them to retract the statement or the advisory that they gave, out, given the uh, potential impact on Barbados? Um, no, we have not, because at the end of the day, and I would probably um, share with you, they, 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 they've made, um, and you would have seen the statement, and it spoke to the the presence of bacteria, they didn't give any more specific. So in terms of what they have identified, um, that is the information. What obviously has been revealed by the chief medical officer is that it is so um, lacking in specificity that it, it requires uh, further analysis. To that end, as I indicated, we have asked to be able to collect samples from those tested areas, and they have a how soon will the Emmanuel Joseph Barbados say? How soon will those tests be done to one of their residences? Um, that we have asked to have it done as a matter of urgency. What I can say to you is that, and perhaps one of the technical, technical persons can explain, we can do testing at what we call source, which is the supply provided by the Barbados Water Authority. And beyond that point, which speaks to the residents or the property, there could be further testing, and that is an issue. Um, so I would ask. Let me just, um, let me just make a comment. Um, we have set up a regime between the United States Embassy and the Chief Medical Officer, and they will communicate as to the specificity of any test uh, going forward. It doesn't mean that the Barbados Water Authority or the Ministry of Health can do tests as the Minister of Foreign Affairs is up to and including the source areas, or that the Embassy cannot do tests on their own. But when they're ready to do the specific tests related to these residences, as we have requested, that will be organized between in, in, in communication with the Chief Medical Officer. So the Chief Medical Officer is the point person in government who will be handling that arrangement. Okay, Carrie, get in from Barbara. Very good. Um, question. With regards to us, those are the regime that sets up going forward. Until you compare the test between yours and theirs in terms of results, will they hold off from issuing advisories? Um, they have made re issued an advisory in some things to, in relation to what they would have done. I don't know that they, they will continue to issue advisories. They will issue advisories when they so determine in relation to any matter. If, as you would be aware, the U.S would issue advisories in relation to um, safety and a range of other things, um, travel advisories, etc. and they will determine that. Uh, but in relation to this, they've raised an issue. We have asked them to expand on it. We have established the need for us to, to do tests and so on. They have agreed, and they have done what they've done on, in relation to this. My concern, and I would say this to you as, as media practitioners, you need to reflect what was said rather than to, to, to interpret it in ways. Because I must say very um, 
firmly that in listening to one of the coverage, one of the stories carried out by one of our media houses, it did not reflect what the U.S. Embassy said. It went way beyond that in terms of what it could be interpreted to say. The interpretation that would have been communicated to me was that they um, basically was a problem in Barbados. People called me about that from overseas. And that was not what was reflected in, in the statement. So I wish that journalists would address these things as accurately as possible. What I wanted to know, um, Senator McLean, is have you had any pushback or any fallout from this advisory as issue? You said you had calls from overseas. Then you said pushback or fallout. Um, you said you had calls from overseas. Barbadians who are concerned when they right. see stories like that. So anything official from any, any governments or government agencies no. or anything no. like that? What I, can, what I can share with you is that there are Barbadians who also share the results of their tests uh, and sharing with me as Minister of Health. That's which they have routinely and, and, and prepared to, to make public tests that indicate there's absolutely nothing wrong. So I think that as the Chief Medical Officer indicated, there's a lot more that has to be done by way of the test to confirm uh, and identify the particular bacteria. But the three bacteria that he mentioned as being the ones that we look out most for are absent <coughs> from the test. So that is the point that we, 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 we should make. So until you do your test, um, you're not accepting those results? No, because we're not accepting tests. We're done. They're giving you results. The question is, and I, I, I will not attempt to, re re to repeat what the chief medical officer said. I think he explained very clearly that the tests were done, but he raised some issues around that. What I would perhaps invite um, one of the technical people to explain what, we, what we've done. I mentioned 50 samples and so on, so the Water Authority could explain to you what we do routinely and what our findings have been. Well, <coughs> as would have been explained, uh, the Barbados Water Authority, we do at least, we collect at least 50 samples on a weekly basis for testing. The actual, the actual uh, our whole requirement is eight, and uh, we are actually doing 50 on a weekly basis. And this is just to make sure that our sample is well dispersed and that we we have been extra careful. Uh, the, there is a particular process for how we do formulate those tests, and I will probably ask Dr. John Monster to detail that if necessary. But in addition to that, uh, what is hopefully by well known is that we have, of, from a security standpoint, we have stepped up at, or at least elevated the amount of chlorination that we do to the water at source. And uh, in addition to the sampling that we also do, EPD has been doing a number of their own sampling as well. So for instance, I'm sure they'll be able to confirm that between December and now, in a, in a particular area, which is well known, which is on the scrutiny of the South Coast here in particular, they've done at least 100 test samples. And this is in addition to the number of samples that we do on a weekly basis. Uh, so out of the abundance of caution, we have done that. Um, we have done intermittent type testing. We have actually been doing a number of other things, both at source and, and uh, spot checking a number of areas. We are pretty comfortable, we're pretty confident that our water supply at source is at least pure. Yeah, um, just a quick question. Um, <coughs> it wasn't mentioned in the, the U.S. Embassy statement, um, but would you guys be able to say where these residences, not the exact location, but where it's South Coast, West Coast, or where all across the island, you know, is where those tests were taking place? Say that again. Um, yeah, location of residences, because it did not specify the West Coast, South Coast, across the island, it just said. Okay, the, what I can say to you is that they were on the South Coast, there were five out of about 68 residents um, or properties of the embassy. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the, I, the, the locations I recall, one is Atlantic Shore. That's where I live, so I was interested in that one. There's one at Graham Hall uh, and Enterprise. Uh, check with the Environmental Protection Department. The, significant point here is that the sewage plant does not, the South Coast sewage plant does not extend to these areas. The South Coast sewage plant ends at the six con millimeter contour, six meter, six meter contour. 
and the fourth location was but none of all the eh? Christ Church, yes, but none 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 in the in the actual air design or the impact of that. Um, I think another distinguishing point that must be made, be made is that the portable water supply to these various residences are actually quite different. And um, they're not the same as the, the portable water supply that, for instance, supplies the Hastings area. This is a world. So you'll have Graham Hall, which has a separate supply as well from the Enterprise um, here as well. So it's, it makes quite an interesting mix, really. It makes it quite interesting. Brian Jill's star called network. I guess now is a good time as any to actually update on what has been happening on this off course. Especially that we this would have been technically the fourth such health advisory that we've got in the space of two of three weeks? So a month. No, 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 let me correct you. When you say the fourth health advisory, we are speaking of a single country. <laughs> and if you had multiple advisories in relation to a single issue, you cannot call it before advisory. I think we, again, Mr. Jilsa, that's precisely the point, that I'm asking you to be accurate in what you say. We have had advisories in relation to one issue from the Canadians, followed by the British, followed by the US. This is a second advisory, or a second alert from the US. So when you say the fourth, Right away, you're not only misleading me, but you're misleading everybody. Okay. This is the referring to the three advisories that were issued on the south coast, the flowing, the sewage overflows, and so on. What is the latest update on that? Well, pretty much the mitigation measures that the Barbie Disorder Authority has been pursuing are continuing. What we recognize on the shared board is the fact that the sewage challenges are worsening. We are effectively in a race against time, but uh, in terms of control and in terms of what we need to do, we are pushing as aggressively as we can to move to some of the next measures. Some of those measures require the approval or input from our EPD and our Ministry of Health Department. And that is happening right now. We have a number of technicians that are looking at exactly those precise solutions. And those really solutions are really aimed first at doing one thing to contain the overflows on the road. Once we can contain that, then we can continue along or continue to pursue the other measures, which is really to address or resolve the fractures, the breaches, and the blockages all in one. We would have been, we would have realized through our last set of tests that we do not only just have a breach, we do not only just have a recirculation from the effluent to the outflow into the influent, but we also have fractures in the inlet line or, or sanitary line in other words, we are getting groundwater penetration. And it's a mix of all of those which is creating the overflows. And because we believe that those factors are worsening, that is why we're having some challenges sometimes maintaining the overflows. But that notwithstanding, we have added a couple of other mitigation measures which we are trying to put in place very quickly. And we're accelerating at least one of the interim measures to be able to control or divert the effluent if we need to, so that we can continue to retard or slow in, in effect, the overflows in the road. I know that when we spoke a while back, uh, we were looking to take some businesses off of the, the line itself. How's that process been going? That's actually been going pretty well. We were able to address the key establishments that were being affected. We have either diverted them into subwells or, or septic tanks, or in some instances, we have installed backflow preventers and that has worked very well. We have not really had any issues since for those particular institutions. We still have, we have a particular list that we're following um, in order priority as we see it, and we're still pursuing that. We still have a few that we need to take offline. I know there was a plan when you were working in the station to divert some of this flow back down into the Bridgetown Park. Is that still the plan? Yes, that's still, that started, that's been in effect for some time. Oh, and that right? was one of our main mitigation measures, and that's working well. At the Bridgetown Sewage Treatment Plant, we know there are a number of things we still need to do. There's one tank in particular, and tank number one, that we are dislodging and preparing as an emergency backup as well, in terms of having it serve as a holding, um, well, if you want to call it that, or holding sump for um, excess, excess effluent. 
also we've had to look at the, the, the road stop um, the station and we are actually clearing those um, filters or uh, grills at least twice or three times a day. This really is just to make sure that the bridge down plant remains um, at least manageable or operable to a at a particular optimum level. I think okay. I think I think I should clear up one one fact mm -hmm. for the media and for Fabian is that you know, I've said it before and I say it again, the Ministry of Health is not in the business of hiding any data in respect to the water condition in Barbados. Our job is to make sure the health of the nation is protected. And therefore, we make sure that the tests we do, we do are done correctly, that the, the data is shared with the relevant authorities. And yes, the WHO, the World Health Organization, to whom we are signatories of the International, International Health Convention. We are regulations, we are required to submit these results to the and to notify to the World Health Organization and notify of any uh, any changes to that regime. We continue to maintain a healthy standard in our water quality in a while uh, Mr. Halliday was talking about the, uh, taking some of the business up. Uh, somewhere in the media today, I would have read that there's a business which is actually going looking to go back into operation pretty soon as a result of and they were being impacted by the same. Uh, so you may want to look into that one. I, I can't wanna, remember the details. I want to go back to the issue about the water policy. In light of the fact that the, the embassy has admitted that the, the negative test for salmonella and polyphorma E. coli and questions about the methodology, did they indicate to you that they're going to stick into that alert or they're going to withdraw it or what? I think that was a question asked in a slightly different form earlier. An, an alert has been issued. You don't, as in my knowledge, you don't undo what you've done in terms of it. What I think is important, and I don't know if the media has captured it, is that the absence of those critical bacteria must be stressed because those are the things that we are worried about. If they were present, the country of Barbados would have to be open. And that is for you as journalists and, and loyal citizens to make sure that the public understands that. Just a final question for me on the bacteria levels which they indicated that were elevated. Um, obviously we understand at this point that they're not really which we were concerned about, but I just want to know if in our testing did we find any elevated levels of the bacteria, even though they are, just to see if there's any general. So I would prefer the Water Authority to respond to that, but what I can say is from the analysis of data and after having discussed with Barbados Water Authority and our other partners, including the Environmental Protection Department, there are no concerns about the quality of water, would be whether you're looking at coliform count or the free residual chlorine um, across the island. As was said earlier, since the challenges on the South Coast, the water quality testing has increased in terms of the frequency. So in addition to the 50 samples that we do on a weekly basis, and that's Water Authority doing that, we've done more um, specifically because of some challenges that we're having on the South Coast. And none of the test results are showing anything that we need to be concerned about from a public health perspective. What I want to add, uh, and I, would, I really want to make sure that this is well understood, when we look at our records in the specific areas that have been identified over the last month or so, all results uh, have always proven to be negative. But I want to even emphasize it more. When we look back at our results over many, many years, we have never had an end result that has been negative. But of course, we've had some failures, and when we sample the areas, they've always proven to be safe. And, and I want to say that because I, I feel very proud of this, the, the quality of our national of our water, and I really want to boast about the, the quality of our potable water, so that everyone understands just how seriously we take this matter, and just why it is affected us to, to the point where we have ended up being here, addressing it to the extent that we are. Barbados has safe water, and I must emphasize that. And we have protocols in place that have been well vetted. We are following the WHO standards. And, and more than that, as I said, we're testing five times that than, than is required. And our testing is augmented or supplemented by that of the Environmental Protection Department, as well as the Ministry of Health. 
I have a question, Janelle, for everybody this advocate. You all stress the water is safe, but bad news travels faster than good news. We can all go back and write the stories. <laughs> we can all go back, we're gonna write our stories, we're gonna appear tomorrow. But are there gonna be concerted efforts being made that to reinforce to Barbadians and to our visitors that the water quality is safe? This will appear in the news tonight, tomorrow, but what happens after that? Well, what I can tell you is that present today, um, and present now, our officials of Ministry of Tourism, Barbados Tourism, Product Authority, Barbados um, Tourism Management Inc. We have uh, present with me officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, um, and we obviously communicate with our representatives across the 13 missions that we have. Um, so we will use multiple yeah. media right. to, to share that information. Um, and of course, social media, I trust in the same way that people use it to spread what is incorrect, <coughs> that we will reverse that. But I did, of course, emphasize the importance of making sure that when these things are done, um, that we do it in a way that does not reflect badly and inaccurately. That's more important. Inaccurate representation of, of a situation. Um, and that is very critical and that is where, because the truth is, there are many Barbadians who will get to see Barbados today, Barbados Advocate, and the Nation News before we wake up tomorrow morning. Whether they are in Nigeria, or North Carolina, North Dakota, because some of them, North Dakota may be later. But the reality is people read our papers online, um, and they're the ones as I said, I would have received queries from Barbadians overseas because they would have read or listened to our radio stations um, in whatever time zone they are. And so, outside of official communication, we rely on the guy and the four best dead to accurately represent that not you know what 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 is up there. And the interest of this country. I don't use that term. Right? <laughs> yes. So persons are here, as you said, from the tourism industry, health, water authority, foreign affairs. How, in terms of Mr. Halliday, with regards to working with the MTW, like I know some of the persons on the South Coast have said that it seems like a disjointed effort because they know that you guys asked to have the crossing, the pedestrian crossing, with you. However, there is still the bus shelter and bus stop right there by the sewer that is of most concern in case like is the effort is there any problem like is there any way to have it move i think it must be appreciated that when you're op when you're operating uh, across several ministries you will have little hiccups and uh, it is fair to say we've had some challenges and um, but we have been bringing the teams together very readily on at least a weekly basis and I think the positives by far outweigh any of the negatives that may seem to be trickling out. The specific issue related to, I know that the crossing was moved. I think based on um, the civil works that would have been required to move the bus shelter, that was not followed through as quickly. But certainly what I would say, given the critical nature of what's happening, the relationships have been proven and harmoniously so. The PSCs have been involved as well in driving, the public sector sorry, have been involved in well in terms of driving the end result. So the short answer to your question really is that um, it's working the way it should, I believe, and I think it will even get better. President Dr. McLean or um, the boys, I'm still really concerned about the fact that you just were told about this matter. Pardon me? You were just told about this issue. Why would the U.S. Embassy go ahead and issue an alert that could impact our country? Considering the methodology, the, the fact that these things were negative, and all that, did you get any indication from them as to why they would want to go ahead and do that? And what I would suggest, or what I would say rather, is that the U.S. Embassy has explained that they have, in the same way that we have a range of protocols, they have certain protocols, and their first port of call, for want of a better word, is to Washington, D.C. Um, of course, I can also tell you that we were notified that this was going to happen. My permanent secretary would have been called yesterday evening to say that this alert would have been given. They take instructions 
from Capitol in the same way that her diplomats take instructions from Bridgestone. And part of their protocol, whether they were reporting on um, safety conditions in Afghanistan or health conditions in Bangladesh or whatever the case may be, they have to go to Washington and they are given instructions to act immediately. What they were able to do is to advise us that this would have been happening. So we were told yesterday evening uh, about the time that they probably were preparing to release the alert that it was going to happen. Um, what I did, however, request was that we get some explanations based on the information. But as you would imagine, as Minister of Foreign Affairs, one of my responsibilities is to ensure that our head diplomats also look after the interests of our staff in our various missions, and that is one of, one of the tasks. But I can tell you that there was communication, uh, and there was communication because we continue to have excellent relations with the United States as with all of our other diplomatic missions here. Um, and there's that kind of communication, but we cannot say to them, please do not release something because they have their own requirements and so do. Mr. Halliday, one of my questions. Persons are acting as if what's happening on the South Pole is <coughs> only happening in Barbados. This has never happened anywhere else. Barbados is the only one tackling this sewage issue. I know right now the same problem is actually happening in Fort Lauderdale. And it's not something that persons are highlighting. But do we ever issue travel advisories in Barbados? Like, this same problem is happening someplace where we have Barbadians, where Barbadians are looking to visit and go. I'm not saying do take for tap, but I'm just asking, do we ever, and are persons realizing that this problem is not unique to Barbados? I will comment on one section of your question, but in respect of issuing advisories, <laughs> I will hand that over to <laughs> the Minister of Foreign Affairs. <laughs> what I would say, you're right, in Fort Lauderdale, they have had sewage leakage on the street on the roads for about three years. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if some required to fix it last report, it was about 200 million US. Mm -hmm. So that really gives an idea of the scope and size of, of what's happening. In the UK, they've had several incidents. And as a matter of fact, in speaking to one or two of our learned council, we have understood, we understand really that there's quite a lot of cases uh, where this type of activity is concerned. And it, for the exact same scenarios, with the exact same situations um, or, or, or issues and taking exactly the same time or more because whenever you have sewage on the ground or there's sitting out, it is not an easy fix. There is a process you have to follow and a process you have to follow simply because no matter what you do, you're having sewage coming at you constantly. So you always have to find ways in which to manage it while you affect the repairs. So our situation is far from unique and perhaps we have not done ourselves a good <laughs> Uh, uh, service by indicating to all and sundry that this is but one of many such issues across the globe. Um, Barbados is a tourism destination. We are 166 square miles. Um, <coughs> US, I can't even begin to remember the size of the United States. Um, I would travel to Florida, I may travel to Fort Lauderdale and not necessarily encompass in an entire period, the particular problem we just heard about. Um, so the reality is that because, and we, we say this in relation to other issues, a matter that might be parochial in a city or a state in the U.S. is for us a national issue. Um, and so I, we're not into the business of tit for tat either. Um, I think as a small but mature and serious country, we deal with things on a factual basis. We engage bilaterally with our partners and with our um, you know, colleagues in, 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 and so on. And as I pointed out in relation to the U.S., um, and I take the opportunity now to thank the Ambassador, um, Her Excellency, for coming and meeting with us and bringing her team because we were able to have very cordial discussions. Um, it would have highlighted some of the concerns that we had. And most importantly, in those discussions, having highlighted what we saw to be some of the shortcomings or concerns that we had, we have agreed on a process of ensuring that we are comfortable. And I, I want to repeat that because they have their protocols in place, we are saying that if you are doing testing of this type, I think it is incumbent on them because they're testing the water supply of Barbados or aspects of it, that they engage simultaneously, and that is very critical, that they engage us simultaneously. They have agreed to that because, as I said, this is how we do things with our, with our, with our partners um, online. Well, let me qualify what I said first of all. 
This is a report of read. I can't say that I have ownership of that information. So, so just for the record, I've read the same report that many individuals have read. With respect to Barbados, a lot of the questions have been done. Um, we, there are number, there's a lot of intangible costs that we have not yet even put into the measure, but into the um, costings, but we see that this will easily be between 10 and 20 million at the start to at least um, return this operation to some semblance of normalcy. But while the costing is one issue, it's a process that we have to follow, which becomes time, time, it will take time, and we have to make sure it's done in a very uh, efficient and uh, least disruptive way. And safe. Well. safe. Situation like this, from a source market perspective, you know how it is with um, TripAdvisor or social media. So obviously, a situation like this, um, you will see remarks appear on social media websites or social media platforms that deals with issues like this. But it's a matter of how we then um, respond to the issue. And how quickly we respond, and I think that that is what we've done here today. Yeah. Any concerns, you know, in general, about the whole issue from your perspective? Yeah, and there are concerns, of course. Um, it's obvious there would be concerns based on how it's being viewed um, from a global perspective, based on um, inaccurate information getting out. But what we are doing is ensuring that we are counter countering the situation by moving swiftly to ensure that the information you heard here today yeah, will get out into the market mm -hmm. and hopefully that will stem the tide of anything that's being said out there. Right? And it will go a long way if you found that, you know, in many cases when these things go viral, it's, it's usually our own Barbadian people who are doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, by doing that, it makes the situation worse. So once we get the accurate information out, and then, as I said, that's what's been done here today. I agree with what was said. We hope that that information is put out just as swiftly as when it is negative information. And we're in the peak of the tourism season. We're right in the middle of the tourism season. Um, given the fact that this has been an ongoing issue for this season, have you seen any impact in terms of follow-up of numbers, cancelled, vacations, etc.? No, there have been concerns expressed, of course, by visitors, especially repeat visitors. But we find that um, even though a lot of comments have appeared on TripAdvisor, that people who come to Barbados, um, once they are, they know that it is in a particular area. I mean, the whole island is not um, off limits, or the problem is not across the entire country. So people tend to just make the necessary adjustments that they have to make to accommodate their stay here. And especially once um, the issue is addressed from the perspective of you get back to them with what's actually happening with accurate information. You know, I'm not saying that some people have not diverted their stay here, but a lot of people are still coming to the island despite this. Once they are reassured of, of, of certain things or areas that they can, um, if it's necessary, to ship out and stay. So yes. So even though there has been some impact, we have done everything possible to keep it from determined. If there are no further questions, I just want to say thank you very much to Minister McQueen, Minister Boyce, and the other technical officials. Thank you very much, members of the media. Thank you. Have a good evening and a good weekend.